The church faces persecution by the CCP. Many brothers and sisters are arrested. His leader assigns him to manage a church's work, but he feels timid and scared, racked with worry. If I'm arrested, and I can't take the torture and become a Judas, won't my days as a believer be numbered? Adverse situations happen quickly, and he's ratted out by a Judas. My heart leapt straight to my throat. The police knew so much about me. I was likely to be arrested at any moment. Will he abandon his work and protect himself or rely on God to keep to his duty? Faced with this dangerous situation, what will he choose to do? Some years ago, an upper leader told me some leaders and workers in a neighboring church had been arrested. At this church, there was some follow-up work we had to do. Those at the church had little support. Some felt weak and negative, cut off from church life. The leader asked if I could oversee the church's work. Hearing that, I felt conflicted. Some members had just been arrested there. If I took over at that church, what if I ended up getting arrested? I'm not a young man. Could I withstand the great red dragon's torture and beatings? If I couldn't handle it, becoming one who betrays God, would my years of faith have been in vain? But then I thought, given all the adversity... The church needed someone to step up in this crucial moment. I agreed reluctantly. When I got to the church, Jin Jing told me. Some leaders and other brothers and sisters had been arrested. Sister Jin Jing had only been able to reach a few church members. She couldn't reach most of them, so they couldn't gather. Hearing this, I thought... The great red dragon is using our neighbors to monitor us. When I go and support these brothers and sisters, what if the neighbors take notice and report me? Also, so many were arrested. If any of them couldn't take the torture and ratted out the others, police will be watching them. If I go see these brothers and sisters, won't I be walking into a trap? If I'm arrested, and I can't take the torture and become a Judas, won't my days as a believer be numbered? I won't attain salvation then. The more I thought about it, the more scared I became. It seemed too dangerous. It felt like walking in a minefield. One wrong step, and I'd be done for. So then, I regretted coming to oversee this church's work and couldn't get motivated in my duty. I thought, Xinjing is a member at this church. She's more familiar with things here. So she should be the one to visit the others. I'm new. I'm not up to speed yet. I can have Xinjing visit the brothers and sisters. That way, I don't have to risk it. But then I thought, Xin Jing doesn't know the principles yet, and lacks experience. Given all of this, can she really do the follow-up work? Will she be able to resolve their issues? But if I go personally, won't I be headed for disaster? I thought about it, and decided to have Xin Jing perform that work. But, after some days, she still hadn't made any progress. When I saw this, I knew I should go support the brothers and sisters, or else their problems would not be resolved and their life entry would be damaged. Yes. Right. But, with how dangerous things were, I was at risk of being arrested any time I made contact with them, so I didn't dare do it myself. And then a month passed, 
the church's work didn't make much progress. Xinjing was feeling negative. When leaders were arrested, the follow-up work needed to be done quickly. Xinjing couldn't handle it all by herself. Right. Yes. I knew that. But in those days, I was living in fear. So I didn't dare collaborate with her on the work. One day, I felt some pain in my knee. In a few days, it had become so swollen and was black and blue. The pain was so bad I could barely walk. I realized at the time, this might have been God disciplining me. So I prayed to God, asking for help knowing His intentions. Then I read this in God's words. Mm. God says, His sorrow is due to mankind for whom He has hopes, but who fell into darkness. Because His work on man does not come up to His expectations. And because the mankind He loves are not all able to live in the light. He feels sorrow for the innocent mankind, for the honest but ignorant man, and for the man who is good but lacking in his own views. His sorrow is a symbol of his goodness, a symbol of his mercy, a symbol of beauty, and one of kindness. Amen. 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 God's words really impacted me. Especially these words. His sorrow is due to mankind for whom he has hopes, but who fell into darkness. I felt quite guilty. Because of the arrests, some people couldn't live a church life. And so they got depressed. Their lives were damaged. Seeing this, God felt anxious. He hoped that someone would quickly heed his will and come to the brothers and sisters' aid so they could live a normal church life. But me? I passed my work off onto Xinjing to preserve my own safety. I retreated to live out an ignoble life. I was aware the brothers and sisters couldn't live a normal church life, and I knew their lives had been damaged, but I didn't help them. Where had my humanity gone? I was being selfish. I considered how, normally, when I wasn't in danger, I thought I was someone who loved God, who made sacrifices and expended themselves. I'd even fellowship with others on the need to satisfy God. But in this situation, all I could think about was my own safety. I didn't consider God's will, or whether other members' lives would be damaged. <sighs> All I'd been saying was mere doctrine. I was deceiving God and people. This was abhorrent to God. Seeing this, I felt remorse. I prayed to God. Dear God, I always protect my interests. I've failed to heed your will. I lack conscience and reason. God, I'm ready to heed your will and do my best to support the others. After that, I started helping other church members, helping their issues get resolved. Mm. One day, I heard a sister say, more than ten brothers and sisters were arrested from this church two years ago. Even now, some of them still haven't been released. The police have threatened to raise our church to the ground. These demons are truly damnable. Yes. That made me angry. Those demons are so arrogant. But also, I couldn't help but feel afraid. After only two years, they'd arrested so many more members and they threatened to raise the church to the ground. If the police knew I was the church leader, wouldn't I be their primary target? Simply thinking about how the others had been tortured terrified me. 
If I were arrested, would I be able to withstand their torture? If I became a Judas, or if I were beaten to the point of death, wouldn't that be the end of me? When I heard even more brothers and sisters were arrested, it seemed it was just far too dangerous to do my duty there. I could get arrested any time. I felt quite timid and scared. That's a normal state, given those circumstances. So did you seek the truth? What did you learn later? One day, I saw this in God's words. Hmm. Almighty God says, regardless of how powerful Satan is, regardless of how audacious and ambitious it is, regardless of how great is its ability to inflict damage, regardless of how wide-ranging are the techniques with which it corrupts and lures man, regardless of how clever are the tricks and schemes with which it intimidates man, regardless of how changeable is the form in which it exists, it has never been able to create a single living thing, has never been able to set down laws or rules for the existence of all things and has never been able to rule and control any object, whether animate or inanimate. Within the cosmos and the firmament, there is not a single person or object that was born from it, or exists because of it. There is not a single person or object that is ruled by it or controlled by it. On the contrary, it not only has to live under the dominion of God, but moreover, must obey all of God's orders and commands. Without God's permission, it is difficult for Satan to touch even a drop of water or grain of sand upon the land. Without God's permission, Satan is not even free to move the ants about upon the land, let alone mankind, who was created by God. In the eyes of God, Satan is inferior to the lilies on the mountain, to the birds flying in the air, to the fish in the sea, and to the maggots on the earth. Its role among all things is to serve all things and work for mankind and serve God's work and His plan of management. Amen. Amen. Through God's words, I realized that everything is within God's control. Satan is savage, but it's still in God's hands. Without God's assent, it wouldn't dare make any false moves. Yes. Right. I recalled how Job was tested. Without God's assent, Satan could only injure his flesh. It wasn't able to rob Job of his life. Right. Of course. And now, in my situation, wasn't it up to God whether or not I would be arrested? No matter how savage Satan was, without God's assent, it wouldn't win even if the great red dragon tried to catch me. If God did assent, I couldn't get away. My life was in God's hands only. Satan had no say in it. Right. Yeah. From God's words, I gained knowledge of His authority and sovereignty. Also, I felt less timid and much more liberated. It's just... I wanted the brothers and sisters to resume church life. Mm. During that time, Jin Jing and I prayed a lot. We made contact with the brothers and sisters and provided support. As a result, they started attending gatherings, living their church lives, and doing their duties the best they could. That's great. Thank God. When we understand God's sovereignty, our faith grows. Yeah. 
we become less constrained in our duties. That's right. Yes. When things are dire, if you don't rely on God and read His words, standing firm will be too difficult. Mm. Mm. That's right. Later, a sister who'd just been released from jail wrote to me. She said I'd been ratted out. The police already knew I was a leader. They knew what village I lived in. They said they'd have the security bureau put out a warrant for me. To locate me, they took the sister to my village to identify me. But then, the surveillance footage somehow got lost, so their plan failed. When I learned that, my heart was in my throat. I felt so anxious. The police had so much information on me, so I was liable to be arrested at any time. And if I were, I'd be tortured and tormented. I became more scared and felt weak for a bit. It seemed, in the land of the great red dragon, belief in God can be deadly. It's like walking on thin ice. Right. So then I thought, maybe I can stay with relatives for a while. Once things cool off here, I can come back. But I remembered the brothers and sisters felt timid and negative. They needed watering and support. If I deserted my post, leaving them at this crucial time, wouldn't I be rebelling against God? Yes. yes. I just felt tormented. I didn't know what to do. So I prayed to God asking for strength and faith to continue fulfilling my duty. Later, I read this in God's words. Almighty God says, In mainland China, the Great Red Dragon continues its brutal suppression, arrests, and persecution of believers in God, who often face certain dangerous circumstances. For example, the government conducts searches under various guises for people of faith. When they find an area in which an Antichrist lives, what is the first thing the Antichrist thinks of? They do not think of properly arranging the work of the church. Rather, they think about how to escape this dangerous predicament. When the church is faced with oppression or arrests, an antichrist never does work to clean up the aftermath. They make no plans for important resources or personnel of the church. Instead, they think up all sorts of pretexts and excuses to find a safe place for themselves. And, having set themselves up there, they are done with the matter. In the depths of an antichrist's heart, their personal safety is of utmost importance. And the central issue, which they are constantly reminding themselves to consider, they think to themselves, I absolutely must not let anything happen to me. I can't get arrested, no matter who else does. I need to keep on living. I'm still waiting for the glory I'll gain with God when His work is done. If I get caught, I'll be a Judas. And if I'm a Judas, I'm done for. I won't have an outcome and will be punished as I deserve. Once an Antichrist has gotten themselves safely settled, and feels that nothing bad is going to happen to them, that they are not threatened. Only then will they do some superficial work. An antichrist arranges things very carefully, but it depends on who they are working for. If the work is beneficial to themselves, then they will think it through very thoroughly. But when it comes to the work of the church or anything to do with the Antichrist's duty, 
They will show their selfishness and vileness, their irresponsibility, and they have not a jot of conscience or reason. It is due to such behavior that they are characterized as an antichrist. Amen. 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 God said antichrists lack humanity. They're selfish. They only care for their own well-being. They only care for their own interests. They have no concern for church work. When it's calm, they make others think they love their duty. But at the first sign of danger, whenever their safety is at risk, they'll quickly abandon their duty. It doesn't matter how much this damages the church's work and members. Antichrists don't care. Right. I saw that my own actions were no different from an Antichrist's. When there was no present danger, it seemed like I expended myself in my duty. But when things got dangerous, I would shirk back, just protecting myself, passing off the risk to my sister. As the church work failed to progress, I only watched. The brothers and sisters lacked church life. I didn't rise to the occasion at all. I only snapped out of it after being disciplined. After I heard I'd been ratted out, and the police were looking for me, I wanted to desert my post. I didn't consider the church work. I was just so despicable. I didn't act like a believer. I thought, where was my true faith in God? The reality of it all showed that I was as selfish as an antichrist, without conscience or a bit of reason. Whenever I felt I was in danger, I'd want to leave my post, abandon my duty just to stay safe. To God, this was abhorrent. I wasn't devoted to Him. Yeah. When times aren't too hard, everyone believes they are loyal to God and obedient. Only when things get tough do we see how selfish we are, how weak our faith. Yeah. Realizing this about myself, I felt such remorse. I saw some of God's words. Almighty God says, Perhaps you all remember these words. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You have all heard these words before, yet none of you understood their true meaning. Today, you are profoundly aware of their true significance. These words shall be fulfilled by God during the last days and they shall be fulfilled in those who have been brutally persecuted by the great red dragon in the land where it lies coiled. The great red dragon persecutes God and is the enemy of God. And so, in this land, those who believe in God are thus subjected to humiliation and oppression. And these words are fulfilled in you this group of people as a result. Because it is embarked upon in a land that opposes God, all of God's work faces tremendous obstacles, and accomplishing many of His words takes time. Thus, people are refined as a result of God's words, which is also part of suffering. It is tremendously difficult for God to carry out His work in the land of the great red dragon. But it is through this difficulty that God does one stage of His work, making manifest His wisdom and His wondrous deeds, and using this opportunity to make this group of people complete. It is through people's suffering, through their caliber, and through all the satanic dispositions of the people of this filthy land, that God does His work of purification and conquest, so that from this, 
he may gain glory, and so that he may gain those who will bear witness to his deeds. Such is the entire significance of all the sacrifices that God has made for this group of people. Amen. 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 Pondering God's words, I got a sense of his intentions. It was God's preordainment that we believers, living under the CCP's domain, would face hardship and also persecution. God was using the great red dragon's persecution to perfect our faith and our love. Amen. Right. But when I faced danger, I didn't seek God's will. I just felt scared and thought of my safety, even wanting to leave my duty. I saw that my faith was truly weak. Instead of bearing witness before God, I'd become a joke for Satan. Seeing this, I felt remorseful. I didn't want to live ignobly anymore. I would submit and put myself in God's hands. I was ready to leave to God whether I'd be arrested, whether I'd live or die. Mm. If I were to be arrested, it'd be with God's assent. Even if it meant my death, I'd bear witness. But if they didn't arrest me, that would be God's mercy and protection. I'd do my duty even better. Right. Yes. Realizing this, I felt more peaceful. My anxiety and fear faded away. Before, I didn't understand. When the great red dragon resisted God, why God didn't destroy it? In actuality, God uses its persecution to perfect our faith and our love. Yes. God really is so wise. Amen. Yeah. If we weren't persecuted, we wouldn't see the demonic side of the CCP. Then we wouldn't abandon and forsake it in our hearts and be firm in our faith. Right. Later, I reflected. Why did I only consider my own interests when faced with danger, instead of heeding God's will? One day, I read these words of God. May I read them? Sure. This part. All corrupt humans live for themselves only. Every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost. This sums up man's nature. People's faith is self-serving. They expend themselves for God just for blessings. And when they're faithful, it is to be rewarded. In sum, it's all done for blessings, rewards, and entering the kingdom of heaven. In society, people work for their own gains. And in God's house, they do a duty for blessings. People forsake all and bear much suffering for the sake of gaining blessings. With all this, there is no better evidence of man's satanic nature. People whose dispositions have changed are different. They feel that meaning comes from living by the truth, that the basis of being human is submitting to God, fearing God and shunning evil, that accepting God's commission is ordained by heaven. Only those who fulfill a creature's duties can be called human. If they can't love God and repay his love, they are unfit to be called human. For them, living for oneself is empty and devoid of meaning. They feel people should live to satisfy God, to perform their duties well, and to live lives of meaning. When their time comes, they'll feel content, without regret, and know they haven't lived in vain. Amen. 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 Through God's words, I learned why I protected myself when things got dangerous, wanting to abandon my duty. It was because my thinking was dominated by Satan's philosophies. Like, every man for himself. Don't bother if it doesn't affect you and other things like that. These satanic philosophies became my nature. No matter what, 
I acted selfishly. When my own interests were at stake, I'd always betray God. I thought, ever since I went to that church, when things were perilous, I only ever thought about my own safety. Even though I knew I had to support those brothers and sisters so they could live a normal church life, I was scared of being arrested and tortured, so I hid away and passed work off to my sister. I didn't consider the church's work or my sister's safety. Even when I saw it was too much for her alone and the others couldn't live a normal church life, I still just wouldn't do my duty. I lived by Satan's philosophy. I acted selfishly and lacked humanity, conscience, and reason. God saves those who are loyal and obedient to Him. In crucial moments, those who abandon their own interests to do the church's work are those who get God's commendation. That's right. But me? When things got difficult, I abandoned the ship. I had no sincerity toward God. Seeing how selfish I was, even if I evaded the police and lived ignobly, why would God choose to save me? I thought how, to save humanity, God incarnated in China and endured incredible humiliation, braving enormous danger to do His work, constantly pursued and persecuted by the great red dragon, slandered and rejected by the religious world. But still, God has never given up on saving us. Right. God gives all in His quest his quest to save all humankind. Amen. God's substance is unselfish and kind. Right. As for me, I had no sincerity toward God. I still lived by Satan's philosophy. I was selfish and treacherous. I only considered my own safety. I didn't safeguard the church's work. If I didn't repent, God would detest and cast me out. Right. In Revelation it says, The fearful can't enter God's kingdom. With experience we see that following God is no walk in the park. Accepting God exists isn't enough. You have to be willing to put it all on the line. That's right. Yes. One day, I read these words of God. Almighty God says, Those who serve God should be God's intimates. They should be pleasing to God and capable of the utmost loyalty to God. Whether you act in private or in public, you are able to gain the joy of God before God. You are able to stand firm before God. And regardless of how other people treat you, you always walk the path you should walk and give every care to God's burden. Only people like this are intimates of God. That God's intimates are able to serve Him directly is because they have been given God's great commission and God's burden they are able to make God's heart their own and take God's burden as their own, and they give no consideration to their future prospects. Even when they have no prospects and they stand to gain nothing, they will always believe in God with a loving heart. And so, this kind of person is God's intimate, God's intimates are also His confidants. Only God's confidants could share His restlessness and His thoughts. And although their flesh is painful and weak, they are able to endure pain and forsake that which they love to satisfy God. God gives more burdens to such people, 
and that which God desires to do is borne out in such people's testimony. Thus, these people are pleasing to God. They are servants of God who are after His own heart. And only people such as this can rule together with God. When you have truly become God's intimate is precisely when you will rule together with God. Amen. 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 Through God's words, I realized, God loves those who care for His will. He loves those who bear His burdens. No matter the situation or the suffering they endure, no matter how hard the path is, they withstand torment to fulfill God and don't think of their own interests. Only they will ultimately be the ones who God obtains. Yes. In that very crucial time, when the church was persecuted, I knew I should heed God's will. I should think of God's concerns, protect the work of the church, and fulfill my responsibilities. With this, I made a promise. No matter the danger ahead, I would do my duty well to comfort God. Thank God. Great. One day, I heard a leader from a nearby church had been arrested. The church's books had to be taken somewhere quickly, or they'd be found by the great red dragon. So then, I asked Sister Zheng Yi to help me move the books. When I met up with her, I saw she had a very nervous look on her face, and told me she had been followed. It had been hard to get away from her pursuer, and I needed to move the books out fast. Hearing that, my heart leapt up into my throat. I felt nervous and afraid. I thought, the police are hiding, and we're exposed. If the police find me, and they arrest me, they might beat me to death. I got more and more scared. I wanted to have somebody else move the books. But I remembered this sister had already set a time for us to meet with the book manager. There wasn't time to find a replacement. Also, with more delays, the risk went up. I didn't have time. Right. As I was wavering, I realized I was being timid. I continually called out to God, asking for faith and strength. Mm. I thought of another passage of God's words. Almighty God says, When those who are loyal to God know clearly that an environment is dangerous, they still brave the risk of handling the work of cleaning up the aftermath, and they keep the losses to God's house to a minimum before they themselves withdraw. They do not give priority to their own safety. Tell me, in this evil country of the great red dragon, who could ensure that there is no danger at all in believing in God and performing a duty? Whatever duty one takes on, it entails some risk. Yet the performance of duty is commissioned by God. And while following God, one must take on the risk of performing their duty. One should exercise wisdom, and one has need of taking measures to ensure their safety. But one should not put their personal safety first. They should consider God's will, putting the work of His house first, and putting the spread of the gospel first. Completing God's commission of you is what matters most. And it comes first. Amen. 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 Right. Those who are loyal to God are able to heed His will. No matter how dangerous things get, they're able to risk it all to complete the follow-up work and fulfill their duties. Mm. I thought, in my years of faith, I'd enjoyed so much of the watering of God's words 
So, now that it was time to do my duty, I couldn't just stand by while the interests of the church were compromised. No matter what the risk was, I needed a way to transfer those books out of there. I couldn't let the great red dragon get them. Right. I thought of the Lord Jesus' words. For whoever will save his own life shall lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake shall save it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Even if I were arrested and beaten to death while doing my duty, it would be meaningful and commended by God. Mm. I thought about how Peter was crucified for God with no concern for himself. He bore resounding testimony for God. I knew I should be like Peter. I should be loyal to God, no matter what, and do my duty well to comfort God. Thank Amen. God. Thank God. Later, I teamed up with the other church members. We used our wits to evade the police. With God's protection, we successfully transferred all of the books. That's great. Thank God. Thank God. What a great experience.